Under public pressure, I am reviewing a board I rarely look at and Boy, am I glad I listened to you. This thing seems to come right from uh, some tech factory of badassery. Today, we are reviewing the heavy Aros X670e Master from Gigabyte, an impressive piece of tech dressed with a generous layer of metallic yumminess. And fun fact for you, this thing was voted sexiest piece of tech tech by virgin nerds which have nothing else to do on their Christmas uh, night but to watch me. Merry Christmas to you all. Aorus, as usual, is gigabyte uh, more premium, more expensive, enthusiast focused lineup of motherboard and the master, well, one of the most expensive of them all, the, the really higher tier of uh, the old family. In short, it is a concentrate of luxurious features, uh, power and robustness. And obviously with the X670E chipset, it receives the PCIe 5.0 treatment, which means a bandwidth explosion if bandwidth was meant to explode. But most importantly, I want to say, the master is now two boards in one since our Gigabyte has decided to axe off its Pro series, which used to bridge uh, the cheaper Elite model to the more expensive Master one, and probably to uh, avoid some weird cannibalizing uh, uh, market issues, which maybe Asus should think about as well. In short, Gigabyte cannot get this board wrong. It's just too big of a market segment for them. No. Starting with the obvious, we are dealing with a very robust 8 PCB layered E80X motherboard, which is what you want to see on such a powerful and signal emitting motherboard. It means a better VRM heat diffusion, a better PCIe signal insulation, a fundamental upgrade, which uh, means a much longer motherboard lifespan. Now, design wise, well, the least we can say is that this board in poses, it looks sturdy, metallic, and most importantly, it looks so good. The overall theme stays within a dreamy space gray, showing off some nice intricate laser drawn shapes cutting across our board componentry. And I like to say this word I just made up componentry. RGB wise, well, we have a rather bright backlight underlining our Aorus Eagle logo, but for the rest, the master stays sober. But for the ones who, well, says uh, enough is never enough, we have instead five Fusion compliant RGB connectors, two of which are addressable. Now, CPU socket wise, well, the board is working AMD's First LGA socket featuring no less than 1718 low pressure pins, drastically increasing new generation AMD processors bandwidth and allowing both the introduction of the PCIe 5.0 standard and DDR5 RAM memory. And as far as I can tell, looking at AMD track record, as I've seen on many other LGA5 um, powered motherboard, this CPU socket should be able to support at least three to four year worth of, of Ryzen processor generations, which is uh, just a big soup of word, big word salad. I don't know you said English, it's just a lot of words. I hope it makes sense to you because it doesn't to me. Now, VRM wise, well, at least we can say that the master does not mess around and imposes a massive 2000 amps VRM. <sighs> 2000 amps. Configured in an eight CPU centric twin phases, plus two, plus two. That is almost 1700 worth of amps to choose the most demanding compatible Ryzen processor, which in another parallel universe um, might have sounded grotesquely overkill, but in application is one of the very few able to push a Ryzen 9 to overclock all its cores to 5.5 gigahertz. And to keep all that heat at bay, Aorus decided to go bananas, providing this massively imposing and premium two VRM blocks linked by a wide copper pipe to ensure an equal heat spread among them too. The main block shows off what, well, probably the very best industry can do, meaning a thin array radiating solution providing an unprecedented amount of radiating heat. In addition, it also shows a very large roof area, further adding radiating surface 
interface to our main block. Now, this side block is more standard, but does manage to radiate quite a bit of heat uh, as well, thanks to its deep and thick fins, which does protubate on both of its sides. Obviously, and as usual, both blocks also feature a double contact design, providing a direct thermal padded contact to both chokes and power stages for a faster heat diffusion. And results are unsurprisingly good. With a severely overclocked R9 7900X, our blocks barely went beyond an iced cool 35 degrees Celsius, which promises a minimal heat strain on our circuit, hence an improved reliability and a prolonged board lifespan. Probably the very best VRM temps I've ever seen on such a powerful VRM and easily explained by the heat blocks quality and the number of power stages the CPU power load is spread on. I mean, overall, needless to say that um, when you are dealing with one of the most powerful VRM on the market, you do not want to couple it with anything less than an R9 uh, uh, processor. I mean, Really. Now, memory wise, our X670 He Aorus Master supports 128GB of DDR5 RAM, overclockable up to a devilish 6.66GHz, which is the fastest I have seen on an X670 E powered motherboard. Now, gaming wise, at this kind of speed, you start to do notice a, 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 an appreciable uh, performance difference when compared to its DDR4 counterpart, but where obviously you'll take the full advantage of the 50% added DDR5 bandwidth is in a creativity creation environment when uh, you do 3D rendering or, or video editing, etc, etc. Now, staying in the memory, we have four M.2 solid set drives, two of which are PCIe 5.0 compliant, able to swap data up to a whooping 128 gigabit per second, which is great, but is one less uh, PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive connector than seen on its Strix X670E uh, competitor, which I did review a few weeks and you should be checking if you haven't done... S wow, that was pretty cool. If you haven't done so yet, yet, yet. Um, and which kind of saddens me. Our two other M.2 solid state drive runs four lanes at PCIe 4 standard, which translate in a still very fast 64 gigabit per second worth of data swap. But all that bandwidth does translate in a lot, and I mean a lot of heat, and ours has decided to join the crazy wagon by first featuring a dual side thermal padded contact for a more intimate heat relief, as well as this monstrously tall thermal padded heat block, which is surely more show than useful, but does add that cool factor you are paying extra money for. Our three other sticks get a much more classic monoplate, which thanks to its thickness does also a great job at keeping our M.2 solid state drive sticks far from the thermal throttling spaghetti monster. Last but not least, all of our M.2 solid state drives connector are equipped with their own screwless locking mechanism, which is quite different from the excellent version we saw on this cheaper Elite variant. I mean, both are good, but ours seems to be still making its mind on which one uh, uh, will survive. Talking about storage, I need to mention our usual six SATA 3 plugs here to service our aging legacy drives and make our grandfather seem so much more relevant. Now, expansion-wise, well, we have three 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the CPU-linked one gets a full 16 PCIe lane treatment, therefore this is where you want to place your GPU for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. It is also the only one running at the PCIe 5.0 standard, allowing it to reach up to a glorious 64 gigabyte per second worth of bandwidth. Our second 16 slot has nothing to be ashamed about, as it shows four lanes at PCIe 4 standard for eight gigabytes of total bandwidth, great for PCIe based storage. And finally, our last naked 16 slots runs at a much more modest two PCIe 3 lanes for a total of two gigabytes per second, great for capture cards. Last but not least, again, um, ours decided uh, to take a leap toward the future and courageously copied Asus very own PCIe unlocking mechanism. That is a first uh, for a gigabyte. Uh, I mean, uh, the PCIe unlocking mechanism, not copying a competitor. Uh, and I'm absolutely thrilled to see that PCIe unlocking mechanism starting to bleed throughout the industry, because with the latest gigantic video cards, it is no luxury. Not so sure about the look of it all, but uh, you know, I find the button a bit bulky, 
but that's me. Overall, uh, the master seems to be trailing behind its Rock Strix competition since it only offers a single GPU support against a dual GPU support seen on the Strix. And that's fine if you are a gamer, but if you are a content creator, as you know, these motherboards should also cater to, um, you are robbed from all the extra computing power you could have on a second GPU upgrade. So yeah, definitely a missed opportunity for gigabytes in my opinion here. Now back IO wise, first let me know the presence of an integrated back IO always reassuring and starting from the left, we have a Q flash button for CPU less bio upgrade, our dual band Wi-Fi 6E able to transmit in the much cleaner and faster six gigahertz radio spectrum, our HDMI and display port output for our integrated graphics, two USB 2.0 plugs, 4 USB 3.15 gigabit plugs, 6 USB 3.2 generation, all able to transfer data up to 10 gigabit per second, except this one, which has a dual channel type C, therefore able to transfer up to a whooping 20 gigabit per second, a 2.5 gigabit search protected LAN. I did expect five at this price range. I did but it's not there. And finally, our premium 7.1 channel Realtek 4080 LC codec serviced by a nice 500 microfarads worth of capacitors. But most importantly, we do have our WIMA capacitors, which brings this codec from good to studio graded stuff. It is simply the best audio codec combination you can find on a motherboard today. Overall, and despite a great premium, amazing audio codec combination, I do find the back IO a little bit below its pricing level and not nearly matching what we've seen on its tricks competition. Now, chipset wise, our master is powered by AMD's brand new X670E chipset, which comes in a dual north south bridge configuration. Both of our chips run on a rather low 7 watts heat footprint, which has the benefit of needing nothing more than a low profile heat shield to stay cool at all time, which is always a good point. Now, Gigabyte is the only manufacturer I know of who decided to keep both of uh, those chips close to each other, which did translate into slightly higher temps as seen on its elite variant but thanks to its much larger and thicker heat plate does manage to stay around a very acceptable 45 degrees celsius at all times on the inside we have a bunch of pcie lanes going in three different pcie standards direction but what really set apart the x670 e chipset is that it can utilize the all 20 PCIe 5.0 lanes from the CPU and allows a much broader PCIe 5.0 support than seen on its preceding models. Now, front panel connector wise, well, apart from our usual two second generation USB connectors and our two five gigabit front panel connector, we have a dual channel type C front panel connector able to transfer up to whooping 20 gigabit per second and fast charge your phone up to 30 watts. Now, this is a subtle and nice upgrade, simple, efficient and practical. But I, I do have to note the absence of a Thunderbolt 4 card connector, which well, it does provide quite a bit of, of uh, how to say, bandwidth upgrade, especially for, again, content creators. So yeah, I do regret not seeing it on the master here, and I hope that, you know, Iris is watching and taking note, because I am Laurent from Laurent's Choice. Now, cooling-wise, our board has an over-the-top 10 hybrid fan connectors, which will all support individually either a PWM fan, a water pump, or even a flow sensor, which is obviously something which makes this motherboard incredibly enthusiastically friendly since it can support any kind of uh, water cooling solutions. And a bit of a waste in the same time, because since we're talking about a single GPU support motherboard, you really don't need that many fan connectors. Six would have been plenty, five would have been plenty. So a bit of, of money waste in my opinion here. Our money wasted. And talking about waste, we have this brand new noise uh, uh, sensor, which is supposed to help regulate your fan speed based on the noise they make. I mean, th the only metric that should comment on how fast your fan runs is the actual temperature of the components. A anything else is simply stupid, in my opinion. If you want to have a fan who makes no noise, well, get a low uh, decibel fan. And, and, and that's it. 
Ugh. Now, troubleshooting wise, well, Gigabyte did bring out the big guns here, thankfully. Starting with our first aid easy debugger, here to signal the main stage of our boots and providing a quick troubleshoot feel of your system. But most importantly, we have a Q error screen, which will refine our troubleshooting experience to the very reason why your thing refuses to work. <laughs> it will one day refuse to work, I promise you. Finally, we have our two power and reset buttons to help us with a trouble-free booting. Overall, a rather premium uh, uh, troubleshooting solution, which at this price range is, well, what I kind of expected. Now, in conclusion, the X670 Hours Master will cost you a hefty 500 bucks, which is, well, uh, in par with its competition. And the whole question is, um, is it worth it? Well... I'm not certain. I always gave stellar reviews to our motherboards, you know that. Uh, but the fact of the matter here is that I feel a few things here were missing and a few important things. The VRM is wonderfully powerful, some of the best on the market, but I really feel that the X670E potential was not fully utilized. No dual GPU support, a shockingly modest back IO, which by the way is easily surpassed by even some B650E powered motherboards and a limited PCIe 5 support on the storage side of things. Simply said, it is an amazing gamer, but at that price range and coming from a master series, uh, I did expect more versatility in order to cater to the creator and production users as well. Mistakes that the Asus ROG Strix X670EE gaming Wi-Fi did not do and therefore making this X670 Aeros master only the second best motherboard I'd like to see on my holiday wish list this year. Ho ho ho. Thank you.